Hi, this is Nobby Knobs. Uh, this is my second attempt to record this video. Uh, hopefully this one goes well. Um, okay, so you are either here because you just bought the Gamepad Thumbstick Fix uh, Marketplace package or you are thinking about buying it. Um, I am here today to show you what is in it and what you can do with it. Um, first of all, the actual content uh, of it is under content, uh, gamepad thumbstick fix, uh, blueprint, and UI. Um, you're not really going to mess with much of anything in here. Um, you can go into UI, utility, uh, input visualizers, and screen input visualizer. Uh, this will be able to allow you to mess with the settings of the UI uh, that you haven't seen yet. Um, the you would go to input zone widget, um, go down to the settings, and oh, let's maximize this. Uh, you would uh, be able to change the colors of the lines, uh, the scale of the um, of the. Oh my goodness, um, uh, the scale of the lines, the color of the lines, etc., 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 etc. That's not important right now. Um, so, in order to use what, um, my goodness, uh, in order to use what we would be, uh, in order to use what you would get from this package, let's go down to the uh, third person blueprint, to blueprints, and the third person character. Uh, no, actually, let's <laughs> let's show off what it is that you're getting. Um, so I'm going to turn on my my gamepad controller now. I'm going to press play, and here we go. Um, in the upper left hand corner, you can see uh, various circles, um, a red uh, a red dot and a green dot. The red dot is the actual position of the gamepad uh, thumbstick. Um, so, you know, mine, I've, I've used this thumbstick for ages, and so, you know, it won't, <laughs> it won't sit dead center anymore. Um, it has a tendency to sit off, up and to the left. Um, uh, and you can see that represented on the little UI here. Um, as we go outside the black circle, which is the, uh, de minimum dead zone area, uh, you can see that it begins to move the character. Now, uh, you can see that uh, the red and green dots are moving independently. Um, the green is the corrected uh, location of the thumbstick, meaning that uh, compared to the red, uh, the red dot, uh, the green dot is where it should logically be. Um, if I go and show you the maximum of where the red dot can go, uh, you can see it is very uh, often, if not almost all the time, going outside of the maximum circle. Uh, I don't know about you, but my thumbstick has uh, a fairly circular area of where it can in fact move in its maximum and so this part has always bugged me and that's why uh, I am now selling this uh, project to help other people who have had this bug them. Um, as you can see uh, the sort of shape that is being formed by the 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 red dot is sort of a, a square with rounded corners um, this corrects the, uh, that error by uh, Unreal in its interp interpolation. No, interpretation of um, of the actual thumbstick input. So let me just get the mouse activated. And I'll be able to point things out. Um, so the black uh, circle in the middle um, is the minimum dead zone space that you have. Um, Normally, uh, you would mess around within the uh, project settings to get a dead zone, but this one we can do within uh, the blueprint code 
to have a better control over it. Um, the outer line uh, is the maximum uh, movement of the thumbstick that you want to have. Um, this is set at one. I don't know why you would ever set it anything other than one. Um, just keep it at one. You know, best advice. Um, and then there is this slightly inner um, inner ring. This is the dead zone high value. You know, seen here. I have it set to 0.9 to show off that it exists. Um, in most cases, you can probably just leave this at one as well. You know, have the maximum edge be the maximum dead zone space. Um, this sort of acts like an outer dead zone. So, if the um, if the the red dot goes into this area, then the green dot will go. You know, all the way to the outermost edge, as if you're pushing it all the way out. There's some instances where you can use this to to some pretty good effect. Um, for most cases, you probably don't need to bother. Uh, all right. Um, speaking of dead zone, um, in order to to use this properly in your own projects, um, I've already got it changed in this. You should probably go to Edit uh, Project Settings, look up uh, dead zone, and for whatever. Uh, thumbstick you're using this for, you would change the dead zone values to zero because we're, ch we're controlling that ourselves uh, outside of this project settings area. And this would just mess things up if we left these at 0.25, which they are you know, normally. So I've already got them changed in this project, but if you were bringing this into your own project, you would need to change these yourself. Um, all right, so let's go into the third person character blueprint and see what we've got going on there. Okay, so uh, we'll get to the movement input in a minute. Um, let's check out down here. Here is where the UI stuff is happening. Um, this this uh, initial UI draw section is for the, um, the outer rings and the stuff that isn't moving. Um, and this updating UI draw uh, is connected to an event tick, and this is what draws the the red dot, the green dot, and the um, various uh, letters that were off to the uh, not letters, the various numbers that were off to the side of the UI. Um, let's go up to the movement input to see how you connect things up for the movement. So normally you would go, uh, okay, no. Normally, you would see that uh, the input axis move forward and uh, move right are just straight up connected to the uh, the add movement input and that the axis value is just moving straight over to here as well. Pardon me. Um, instead, we decide to turn the each of these axis values into a variable um, the uh, the move forward would be the y variable, the move right would be the x variable. Uh, we then get the new node um, get corrected input um, uh, that we uh, can just go and look up by you know typing in corrected or and you would find it in the input helper library or we can go and look up helper library and we get uh, uh, all three of the new nodes. Um, one is used within the others. Um, the two important ones are the corrected input and input strength. Um, the corrected input is what I'm showing right now. Uh, this is used to uh, correct the <laughs> input of of the of what Unreal gets in from the uh, the thumbstick currently, uh, so you would have you know you take the x value, you put it into the x, you put the y value, you put it into the y. Um, we also need two more uh, variables: one for dead zone low and one for dead zone high. Again, dead zone high, you can 
have it at 1 for most instances and you're going to be fine. Um, I'm just having it here at 0.9 to show it on the UI. Um, I have the dead zone low set at 0.25 to make it so that it's you know pretty much the same type of thing that you would uh, get from uh, what you would normally see in a third person character, you know, just standard. Um, again, you can set that to whatever it feels good. Uh, keeping it, you know, 0.25, maybe even 0.3, uh, if you have a, a really funky controller that doesn't want to stick straight up for its neutral position, um, you know, whatever you find to work well. Uh, the corrected input fixes all of the inputs and then outputs the you know the new Y and the new X for a more um, a more <laughs> correct uh, uh, value. Um, so going down here, uh, we also need to create. Uh, a variable. Um, I mean, you could not. You could just you know type this as one over here and not need it to be a variable. But I like it, having variables more often than not. So dead zone max, and that is the the outer the outer max limit of the uh, of the the UI, the the outermost circle, um, the one that never moves. Uh, then down here. We've got you know thumb X, thumb Y, dead zone low, dead zone high. Just put these in as needed. Um, oh my goodness, what did I need to say additionally? Um, so we've got all that. Uh, oh, uh, for the input strength, um, that's another neat little thing that I. I occasionally find myself using um, in circum cer certain circumstances. So what it is uh, is so it's a you know a zero to one scale of essentially how far off center the um, the thumb stick is. You can see the uh, here. Let me. You can see the strength here. Uh, so just take a look at that, and then, you know, once it gets out of the dead zone, uh, then it begins to register um, the strength. Essentially, how far off center? Um, gosh, did I just say that? How far off center the thumbstick is? Uh, I personally like to use it for um, uh, certain parts of animation blueprints uh, rather than speed because then if your character is standing on something that's moving you would normally have to correct for the speed of the thing that you're on or else it's going to use your acceleration and your character is just going to walk when he's standing still but if you have it like this then you can just use this strength input rather than acceleration and then you don't have any issues because unless you're telling your character to move, he's not going to like animate like he's moving. Um, that's a, just a little bonus extra. Uh, gosh, I don't, I don't think I've got anything else additional to say about this. If it seems like a useful thing in your project, oh, uh, I'm currently using this for the left thumbstick. It can just as easily be used for the right thumbstick. I just don't have a, anything particularly set up to show that off. Um, so, yeah, if this looks like something you would find beneficial, get it. I really can't think of any project that... Um, oh, I almost forgot. Uh, sort of uh, an, a comparison of what... Um, how this, the dead zone of this project differs from the dead zone of the normal Unreal Engine, you know, settings are. That really bugs me. Um, so this creates a circular or radial dead zone. Uh, this is what you would normally imagine a dead zone to look like. 
what Unreal does is it uh, creates a specific, you know, x-axis dead zone and a y-axis dead zone. So, or, yeah. Um, so what that means is that if you want the the y value to go to start registering a value, uh, if no, if you're pushing forward um, like this, uh, so let's see the the little little red dot. Um, this red dot would have to be um, at this height anywhere um, anywhere along here because it does it by it it creates a dead zone by the axis which essentially makes it that look like a cross so you know if you imagine the dead zone to be a red area you know you'd see a red area a red bar here and a red bar here and overall it just makes it feel really unresponsive it it feels icky if you've ever noticed it um, and you couldn't figure out how to fix it this is essentially how to fix it because this allows you to have you know, you, can be, you can be going to the right or going to you know going to the right and if you want to move up just a little bit it allows you to it makes it so that you know these you know, minuscule motions are you know just as accurate as you know when you're going you know up here at you know 45 degrees um, it just feels a lot better well that's my opinion um, if you've never noticed it <laughs> great congratulations uh, you won't know the pain for a while hopefully um, if you have noticed it hopefully this will uh, alleviate <laughs> your internal screaming uh, so yeah if you find this to be something that you like or something that's interesting or something that you really absolutely need for your project um, you can pretty much add this to any project and it will be a benefit to every project so um, yeah if you know if you like it get it um, thanks for listening bye